So here I am in a district administrator account, and I'm looking at a report from the insights area. This report happens to be called the single assessment report. And I'm looking at the assessment summary view um, and just looking at sort of overall statistics for this fall 2020 eighth grade math benchmark test uh, that uh, happened a few months ago. So anyway, I can see the average score in points and percent. I can see how many students took the test, uh, how many were absent. And then I can see how students performed on these district performance bands. These are bands that I can set up like many things in an enterprise subscription from the settings area. So I could name these what I want. I can have as many or few of these sort of categories of per performance that I want. And I can see for every test how students did. I can also see some statistics at the school teacher and class level down below. So if I move to this pure performance comparison view, I can see how the different schools compared to each other and the line indicates the district average. I can look by score as well as raw score and proficiency band and above and below standard performance. So I'm just gonna keep it to score percentage for this, but I can compare by a lot of different cohorts, teacher, let's go ahead and look at that, and class and a lot of different student subpopulation groups. Let's just look at one, let's look at free and reduced lunch students compared to their peers. So we might have realized, you know, this test just took place, let's pretend, um, and it closed. And we can see immediately, oh, there's an achievement gap we want to try to narrow. So we can go ahead and, and try to address that. But the great news is we're seeing this all in real time in reports that are really intuitive and easy to interpret and use and navigate. And then here we have question level analysis. So here we can see across the district, you know, question three is the, mo the most difficult question for this eighth grade math benchmark test. And we can compare by school, we can compare by teacher. And in this case, it's something interesting came up where we can see that one teacher was still teaching it at 100%. So it could be that she has some best practices to share. So the data kind of comes alive and where we see actionable information that can benefit everybody. So maybe uh, we'll reach out to her to learn what she's uh, doing to, to perform better uh, with her students on that question. So uh, another important note is that I'm looking at these reports across the district. And I mentioned that teachers have additional reports with the premium access. They actually have these same exact reports for their teacher account. The only difference is they're only able to see their classes and, uh, and then there's a school account too. And the assistant principal and principal at the school are able to see across the school only. But here at the district level, I can see across all the schools, all the teachers, all the classes, et cetera. So um, just wanted to point that out. So we can all be talking, speaking the same language. So could be question three is interesting, but no one's seeing this district view except me. I can go ahead and share this out into a reporting group, maybe the math PLC team and uh, so that they can all see this district view. So anyway, we're moving on to response frequency. And this first shows how uh, people did on the different tech enhanced question types. So how'd students perform there? Uh, we can also see, is there a performance threshold that's not being met? Is there a misunderstanding threshold uh, that's being exceeded? So for example, um, I'm going to 30% here, and this is going to highlight in orange any wrong answer that got more than 30% of the responses. So in the case of question three, which we saw earlier was, was uh, problematic, we can see that A was the correct answer, but C is a common mistake. So we can even click into question three and look at it and see what was, what was that common mistake C. And so we can see it's similar to A. So at the teacher level, at the school level, and at the district level, we're able to not only know right away in real time where to focus our attention, but how to focus on it um, by you know, addressing common misconceptions or things like that. So then finally, um, you know, there's a standards-based report for every single test and there's also a student score distribution. So in this case, this is an 11 point test. And if I just wanted to look at those students who scored um, you know, six points or less in this below basic category, I can find them down below here now. 
And I can actually add them to a um, group if I wanna assign them additional practice or things of that nature. So anyway, this is just one report. That's the single assessment report. If you're interested in looking above and beyond just one test, the next report might be good, which is the multiple assessment report. So this is where you can show, it shows performance over time. So for example, that beginning of year diagnostic test, how are students doing on that compared to the mid-year sort of check-in or how are they doing on the you know, pre versus post test? Um, and then you know, back to our free and reduced lunch students example, you know, over time, as we're looking at cohorts, how are we narrowing those achievement gaps? We can actually see snapshots over time as well as individual student performance. Um, so we can intervene if students are, are performing worse. And then we have a detailed standards mastery report that shows domain level and standards level uh, mastery in aggregate across the academic school year. And then finally, we have a standards progress view. So for every single standard, you can see as a standard is being introduced and then retaken across the academic year, we can see you know, how, what's, what's going on with the proficiency, are students uh, really understanding these standards? Are there standards that we need to focus on? And then there's a student profile report that's a detailed report for each student. So this can be great at you know, the teacher and school level uh, as they're talking with parents or the, the student themselves. We see domain level performance, standards level performance, longitudinal performance as we toggle from year to year, and then you know, progress. And we can even click down to any attempt. And of course, I can have this access to the district level too. And then there's one report that teachers don't see but they, you do see it at the school level and the district level, which is the engagement report. So you can check in on usage. What does the activity look like by school? What does it look like by teacher? What's the summary look like? So you see all these uh, reports in Edge Elastic. And there's also the opportunity to monitor assessments in real time. So I was mentioning a fall benchmark. What if we wanted to check in on the spring one that's going on right now? We could see here, um, you know, these are the classes that are done with it. Here are the classes we might want to remind them, the window of the assessments closing. Here's the one in progress. Uh, we can click here and check in and see, you know, how's, how's this class doing? We can click down to the student level, the question level, the standard, all of that. So not only do we have these great in-depth reports in the insights area, but we can also monitor common assessments as they're occurring or after they're done in this area too.